Welcome to today's video, where today I'm going to be listing my top 10 worst missions in Bully. Now before I begin, I just want to say that not all missions on this list are bad because they're awful. They might be bad for other reasons. Most, however, on this list are just plain awful. So let's get on with it. Number 10, Miracle on Bulwer Street. So we're going to start off the list short and sweet with the Scholarship Edition exclusive mission, Miracle on Bulwer Street. So the main objective of this mission is to run a rival Santa Claus out of town by destroying his grotto which does seem simple enough. I think these kind of missions are fairly common in Grand Theft Auto. Issue is, is this mission is so easy, it's unbelievable. We don't even have any law enforcement coming after us. We do have elves wanting to beat us up, but from my experience, it's like a 50-50 chance if they'll actually fight us or not. They might fight, or they might just stand there like gormless little gimps. Now, unlike many other missions in Body, which do have a load of objectives, this one just does not. It's literally go there and hit these objects. Fun fact too, you don't actually have to do them in the order the mission tells you to. In fact, you can actually skip the entire mission just by jumping into the castle and ignoring the rest of the grotto. The mission can be done in less than 30 seconds if you're really quick. And this mission wouldn't be so bad if there's a bit more challenge to it, but rather than Santa just standing there accepting this, it could be Jimmy would have to avoid him while smashing up the grotto. Like, you know, Santa would chase him, alongside the elves. Or maybe law enforcement would chase Jimmy too, considering there's a police station right next to it. Fact number two about this mission is, there's actually a glitch that might happen, where after beating this mission, authority figures just won't spawn until you next reload the game. So, there's some nice coding you've done there, Rockstar, really. Number nine, lawn mowing the football field. Now, one way in which Buddy is unique is, if you get busted a set amount of times, Jimmy is forced to do detention as a punishment, rather than constantly respawning good Dr. Crabble snitch's office. Now, the first three detentions are Jimmy mowing the lawn for Harrington House. Not bad, we can do this in about a minute. The second detention is Jimmy being forced to mow the lawn by the parking lot. That's even easier, we can do that in a better minute too. But the third detention teaches us all about detention and how we really took mowing Harrington Hayes' lawn for granted. We have to mow the football field, and considering we have to mow about 60 to 80% of it in the world's slowest lawn mower, it's tedious and takes about 3 to 4 minutes to do. God forbid if we actually do this before the end of the game, where the jocks hate you like 90% of the time. So once the lawn mowing is done, prepare to be attacked by jocks for being on their turf. Now the reason it's quite low on this list is because Rockstar wanted to punish the player for getting busted, and they really did succeed with this lawn mowing punishment. And to add a bit of an insult, if you accept your punishment and do all 9 levels of lawn mowing, you will unlock a prisoner's outfit which doesn't even add to 100% completion. Number 8, the Greaser Towny Challenge. Allow me to explain. These challenges are literally the exact same as each other. Cutscene the two characters talking, Jimmy barges in, Click gets pissed off, mission begins, Jimmy defeats three Click members, three more run through the doors, Jimmy deals with them, now Jimmy owns a safe house, mission completed. My main issue with this is because they're literally copy and paste, which doesn't take much effort, nor does it make much sense, considering every other Click has a challenge that revolves around that Click's interests. For example, the prep challenge is about boxing, with the nerd challenge it's playing video games, and with the jock challenge it's playing sports. Now, I do think this mission does work well as a dropout mission, but not so much the greasers, as the dropouts are a lot more violent than any other click. I do think maybe having a race or something like that would have suited the greasers a hell of a lot more, as that is something the greasers do seem to enjoy. Anyway, even then, these challenges are really, really, really easy, especially if you have a spud gun, which in the case of the townies, there is a 90% chance you will have a spud gun at your disposal. Overall, it just feels really lazy, like Rockstar copy and pasted the same mission twice, just with a different cutscene over the top. I will say that the cutscenes are pretty good, like with the Greaser challenge with how unlucky watching TV and Jerry and Otto talking about card games, it does set up the clubhouse atmosphere rather well. Number 7, The Candidate. Once again, allow me to explain. This mission is not bad, it's really good. We get our first Guardian Angel type mission, we get taught new game mechanics, and the mission itself is quite challenging with good length and a really catchy soundtrack. So what makes it one of the worst? I've mentioned this thousands of times and I'll repeat myself yet again, but the reason I believe it's one of the worst is because from the very beginning of the game, there's a load of emphasis on this upcoming school election, which is supposed to revolve around two main characters, who are Ernest Jones and Ted Thompson. There are posters everywhere, students are talking about it, and the candidate is our introduction to this election storyline. Which goes literally nowhere. Straight after this mission, all decorations are gone, and nobody ever talks about this again. Not even in Ernest's own chapter, where he wants to get revenge on the jocks. He seemingly forgets about it, as does Jimmy, Ted Thompson, and pretty much every other person in this game. 
It's just a massive tease for a heavy storyline, which never happens. Much like when Rockstar announced GTA V's single player DLC back in 2014. I can't help but wonder if future missions for the story were planned but never made, or they were made but scrapped. But honestly, it's just a massive waste of a story, and I think if they changed the mission story a bit, to say Ernest giving a presentation in front of the whole school rather than an election, it would be much better. So yeah, this mission is one of the worst for storylines, and that's why it's on this list. The mission itself, however, is really great, and in my opinion, it's one of the best, if not the best, in Chapter 1. Number 6, Nutcracking. Now, Nutcracking is a mission exclusive to Scholarship Edition and Anniversary Edition, and takes place halfway through the forced Rudy the Fake Santa storyline. Now, this mission is basically an extended version of Music Class, which doesn't sound that bad, really. But, the entire mission takes about 5 minutes to complete. We have to sit through three Christmas carols as we play a minigame to put on a show for the audience. The minigame itself is much, 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 much easier than Music Class 1. Hell, if you hit every single note perfectly by the time Jingle Bell starts to play, you'll somehow have about 100% and will have passed. It's basically forced upon the player to sit through five minutes worth of Christmas carols, which, outside of late November to New Year's, I find to be really out of place. Like, if it's in the middle of July, I don't really want to hear Christmas carols, as it takes away some immersion. I do actually find the mission to be a lot more enjoyable if I play them near Christmas, like, you know, in December, because that way then I think the mission is quite nice and does set the mood, but that's the only nice thing I can say about the mission. It's just too easy, the mission is just too easy, too long, and, you know, feels really out of place. Not only that, but as much as I despise the Rudy the Fake Santa storyline, this has literally f*** all to do with that storyline either. Like, at least in Rudy's missions there was some story, even if it was complete horse. This mission should have been left in as an optional side mission only available for the first two days of Chapter 3. Now this mission is just tedious, really out of place and just feels incredibly forced. Number 5, Balls of Snow. Now this mission is our start to the alternate storyline in Chapter 3. Anyway, this mission is another Guardian Angel style mission, but much, 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 much crappier than the candidate. For a start off, the mission cutscene implies Jimmy will be defending this homeless drunk from townies. But that doesn't happen at all. Instead, Jimmy just throws snowballs at townies who don't do anything at all in this mission. Or not the candidate where Jimmy had to protect Ernest from jocks who were looking to humiliate him. Which did actually get more and more difficult as the mission went on. But with this mission, all the townies do is just walk up and down, up and down, up and down. Or in some cases, don't even move. They don't even retaliate when Jimmy throws anything at them. They don't even attempt to abuse the bum Santa like the mission implies. And somehow Jimmy has rapid fire on in this mission, which means he can somehow plow the townies to hell and back just by repeatedly tapping the button. So if you miss a townie, no worries, just keep tapping that throwing button and just aim a bit higher. You'll get them eventually. Now this mission is also insanely glitchy too, where a glitch may happen where one of the townies breaks character for the mission and throws a snowball back at Jimmy, who then gets stuck in this pose and can't throw anything back, meaning you'll have to either reload or wait out the time limit. Speaking of the time limit, it's an absolute joke in this mission. I swear, unless you're playing on the Wii version of this game, you'll probably be done with this mission before that time it even goes past the quarter mark. Overall, it's a really boring mission that has no challenge, no action or anything in it really. Also, I just want to say this, that while I do like Buddy's soundtrack and I do consider it to be my top 10, I swear the soundtrack for this mission is obnoxiously loud, starting off nice and quiet when you climb the ladder before a sudden change blasts your eardrums out. Number 4, Nerd Challenge. None of you are probably surprised to see this one on here, as Nerd Challenge is universally hated amongst Buddy fans. Now, Nerd Challenge is a mission where the nerds will only let Jimmy into their high day if he beats Fatty's Consumo high score. Seems simple enough. Consumo itself is an in-game arcade game where Jimmy has to control a sumo wrestler to become as fat as possible, by eating apples, pies and fish while avoiding rotten versions of the food alongside blowfish. As the character gets bigger, so do the game objects, and their speed increases too. So this basically is an endless minigame which tests to see how long you can last. But the mission itself is rather difficult. Now what makes it so damn bad is that Fatty's high score is 1010, and you only get 3 lives or you have to restart the entire minigame again. And by the time you reach about £700, there's a high chance you'll already be down to 1 or 2 lives, and it's so infuriating when you're at £900 and you get a game over. Now what really takes the in this is when you're raging because you got screwed over, you'd probably attack the nerds. Do that and your mission fails. Now Rockstar knew this would piss a lot of players off, so they decided to go into hardcore trolling mode by not letting us kick the out of Fatty, Algie and Bucky for making remarks about us failing. And that's not even taken into consideration that the last rubber band is in this clubhouse's bedroom. You're not going to get a rubber band ball until you beat this. 
I'll admit one thing though I do like about this mission is it's a lot more unique than the Greasers and Townie challenge, which as I mentioned is just to beat up 6 of them and somehow Jimmy's conquered their turf. And I can also compliment the fact that no challenge strongly lives up to its name. At least Rockstar listened to fan feedback on this and nerfed the score down from 1010 to 800 on the Anniversary Edition. Number 3, Small Defences. Now I'm not sure you can even call this a bloody mission. So you know those gnomes that Jimmy destroys in the game to get a gnome outfit or to 100% complete the game? Well for some reason, gnomes aren't available in Scholarship Edition until you beat this mission. Or should I say watch a cutscene. Rockstar felt the need to make this a mission. When it's not even a mission, it's just a bloody cutscene, which coincidentally unlocks the gnomes in the game's world for Jimmy to destroy. Now while I guess it does add a bit of backstory as to why Jimmy's destroying people's garden ornaments, it's really, really unneeded. Like we don't get a mission or a cutscene of why Jimmy's collecting grottos and gremlins cards. We don't have one for why Jimmy's collecting rubber bands. Coincidentally, I also don't recall GTA San Andreas having a mission where CJ has to collect clams and horseshoes. Nor do I recall a mission in GTA 4 where Nico Bellic declares war on pigeons. They were just there for the player to explore the world and get a bonus for finding or destroying everything Rockstar placed. Like, once this cutscene is done, the game plays one of Jimmy's mission completed quotes, even though nothing happened. Bonus points for this is that the mission marker is at the prize tent. The entire cutscene takes place inside the prize tent. After the cutscene, Jimmy spawns next to the squid ride, for some unexplained reason. It feels like Rockstar were planning an introduction to the gnomes, like maybe have Jimmy smash a few gnomes around Bull with Fail to serve as a tutorial. Even when you've smashed all the gnomes, you don't get a mini mission or a cutscene to revisit the midget, Jimmy just gets his gnome outfit. It's just lazy, uncalled for and feels out of place. Now, the gnomes themselves are perfectly fine and there's nothing wrong with them. I quite like them in fact as it gives the player reason to patrol Bullworth to find them. But as I said, the fact Rockstar actually had to count this as a mission to unlock the gnomes is weird and a really useless kind of add-on. Number 2, Geography Class. Now some of you might not consider classes in Bully to be missions, but for me I do consider them to be missions since they do add to 100% in the game and do reward Jimmy much like errands and minigames do. I do understand if you don't consider classes to be missions, but this is my list. Anyway, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I hate geography class because, well, I'm just absolute to geography in real life. I sucked it in school and I sucked it in games too. Now, as a Brit, I can pass geography one with very little issue. It's just the bloody rest of them. I don't know anything about American states, where they're located or whatever. I don't know anything about Asia, other than it's where the best Korea is located. Nor do I know about the Middle East. Now luckily I can actually search these up online while playing, but when I first played Scholarship Edition back on my Wii in 2009 before I even had internet, geography was absolute hell. I spent ages constantly reloading save games because I kept randomly dropping flags hoping they were right because I don't know where the bloody hell they went. God only knows how long I actually spent randomly dropping flags just to reload my save, then trying again trying to remember where each flag went. What also makes this a piss take is it's the only truly helpful class exclusive to Scholarship Edition. In the base game, all the classes give you abilities, fair enough, but every scholarship edition class except Geography only give you clothes, which is why I wanted to beat Geography since I don't have to watch a 30 minute video showing me what all the bloody rubber bands and gnomes are. Number 1, The Collector. Oh boy, what can I actually say about this mission? It screams rushed, even by the bloody cutscene. The mission marker is at Blue Skies Industrial Park, but the whole cutscene takes place in New Coventry. It was obviously cut from the PlayStation 2 version of Bully because if you watch the Christmas trailer, you can see a snippet of this mission. But for some reason, it was brought back in Scholarship and Anniversary Edition. There's no mission specific music in this, and aside from the crosses that appear on your radar, you could honestly go about doing whatever and you'd probably forget all about this mission after like 30 seconds. Which, coincidentally, is probably how fast you can actually beat this mission in. It honestly feels like it's a test mission for the game to test how bike jacking and storing stuff works. But then somebody at Rockstar decided, you know what Bully needs? We need this mission. There's actually no reason for this to be a mission at all, it could just work as an errand and it'd just be as boring and unchallenging. Oh, and that's not even counting the mission Mailbox Armageddon, which was supposed to be the introduction to Jimmy and Clint meeting. But for some damn reason, both missions are available at the same time. So, excuse that timeline a bit. Not that anybody really cares about the Jimmy and Clint crime storyline anyway. Fun fact about this mission as well, it seems that it was scrapped and changed really late into development, as a beta version of it exists, which had something to do with Lola and Edgar and two other townies, which does make a bit more sense. And from what I've seen of the mission, it's literally the exact same mission just with a different sort of storyline to it. 
I'm just glad that it's a side mission and not a main mission. It seems Rockstar got really, 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 really f with the enhanced exclusive missions. Like, I love Bully and I love Rockstar, but God above, the fact Rockstar clearly shoved in some crappy cut content from the PS2 version and used it as a way to advertise Scholarship Edition having this exclusive stuff is really, really crappy in my opinion. So that's my list of the top 10 worst missions in Bully. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments below. I do read most comments, providing they're not spam, telling me to check out the generic Fortnite channel. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a nice day.